Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. You haven't seen this show before. My name is Art Bergeron. My day job, I am an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, but this show has nothing to do with elder law. It has to do with my friends, Frank and Mary. Um, you've seen them. If you've seen presentations of mine or seen this show, uh, Frank and Mary, their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're in Northborough, that means they want to stay here. My wonderful co-host, Chris Lindquist, always finds these great co-hosts to be, or, or these great guests to be on the show because Chris, uh, from his job running the library, seems to just know everybody and he's just kind of out there. Um, so he has all these wonderful folks. This is the COVID-19 edition of Frank and Mary because Frank and Mary are now stuck in the house all the time. I you know we can't get out, want to know what's going on in their town. That's really the purpose of this show, to let you know what is going on how you can kind of live through this whole experience, you know, how memorable to find out that this is the experience we get, you know, toward the end of your life. So, Chris, can you just talk to us about whom we have for guests, although I see a few familiar faces today? Well, Arthur, we uh, so today we've got um, three wonderful guests uh, with us. First of all, we've got Leslie Harrison, and Leslie is a Rotarian, um, and she's here to talk about Partners in Health and Dr. Paul Farmer and the incredible work that uh, he's doing over in Haiti, helping with uh, you know health needs in Haiti. Um, and then we have Pat and Skip, uh, Skip Doyle from the Rotary uh, also. And I'm a Rotarian, by the way. So really, Arthur, you've got four incredible Rotarians here today. And uh, you know we're just gonna uh, talk a bit about uh, Partners in Health and how the Rotary has been uh, supporting that um, organization. And, and also, Leslie's going to talk about our uh, project and our plan to invite Dr. Farmer to Northboro uh, this fall. Of course, we don't know what's going to be happening in the fall, but our, our tentative plan is to have him come and, and give a talk at the, uh, at the high school. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say welcome to Leslie, and, and perhaps she can give us a bit of background about, about that project. Leslie. All right. Um... So, yeah, so I'll start with a little bit of history, actually, a little background. Um, I've been going to Haiti for about twice a year for the last six years. And before I went to my first on my first trip, I asked for some recommended reading. And someone said, you got to read um, a book by Tracy Kidder called Mountains Beyond Mountains. So I read it and it's, it's basically a biography of uh, Dr. Paul Farmer. Um, amazing book. I read it six years ago. I tend not to remember books for very long like what I've read. So six years later, I'm on a trip to Haiti uh, the day before the uh, earthquake anniversary. So January 11th of this past year of this year. And I'm getting ready to get to my window seat. And there's this guy about to sit in the aisle seat. And I said, hey, could you, you know, just hold on a second. I'm going to scoot in. And I see he's wearing a partners in health vest. So I, being the smooth person that I am, I said, oh, do you work for Partners in Health or do you, did you get the vest some other way? He said, no, I work for Partners in Health. And then I said, do you know Paul Farmer? And he said, I am Paul Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a world-renowned, you know, humanitarian doctor. Um, so I was kind of embarrassed. I, but then I even asked him a couple of times if he was pulling my leg. But in any event, so we sat down and, and uh, no one took the center seat fortuitously and we ended up chatting for the entire four hours so it was quite a remarkable experience and he's an amazing guy um so uh anyway so that was sort of the genesis and then after i got to haiti uh started you know sort of looking into him again and discovered there's this documentary um that he had not mentioned called bending the arc that was done in 2017 which tells the story of um of Partners in Health and their work, not just in Haiti, they actually got their start in Haiti in 1983, but they've been working in 12 countries around the world. Um, so I approached uh, Chris to see if he wanted to partner with the library and Skip and Pat, if uh, Rotary wanted to co-sponsor it. So we were supposed to have actually done it this past week, this documentary screening and invited Paul Farmer to come and he was going to come as well. So it's going to be quite the event. We have rescheduled it for September 17th, but I don't think a crowded auditorium and handing finger foods around at a reception is going to be happening in September either. So we will, as Chris called it, kick the can down the road as far as we need to in order to do the do the uh, screening right. So, so that's the story. <laughs> so talk to us about partners in health. What 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 it, what is what is it? What does it do? So Partners in Health is a, a um, an NGO, you know, uh, so P Paul Farmer, so the genesis was Paul Farmer uh, had gone to Duke. He decided before he was going to medical school, he wanted to go to Haiti. 
So he went to Haiti for a year um, and he met someone named Ophelia Dahl, who actually is the uh, daughter of Ruald Dahl, and they became passionate about the work that they were um, doing in Haiti. And fast forward four years, uh, Ophelia Dahl and Paul Farmer and someone named Jim Kim, who ended up becoming the president of the World Bank, and he's a uh, pretty renowned um, they start founded in 1987, founded, co-founded Partners in Health. So they started their work in Haiti. Um, kind of their claim to fame is they say, we go, we make house calls and we stay. They build health systems and they stay. They don't just go in. They're not like disaster relief. They go to, um, they call it accompaniment. So that's kind of their claim to fame as accompaniment. They go in, they hire, they think like 95% of their employees around the world are locals, you know, are natives. Um, and, uh, that's what they do. So their accompaniment is their kind of their claim to fame. Um, and they say that health is a human right. So that's really their their mission is to provide health care to all. They call it a preferential option for the poor, which is to say that not only do the poor deserve good health care, they because of their circumstances, they deserve even better health care. So, you know, Paul will kid about bringing the quality of health care from Haiti to Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, And, and so you've been going down regularly for, the, for many of these years? I've been going to Haiti uh, twice a year since 2014. I started actually my involvement with an organization called Be Like Brit, uh, which is a Massachusetts-based organization. Brittany Gengel died in the earthquake in 2000, uh, that there was an earthquake in 2010, um, January 12th. She died at the Hotel Montana. Um, and uh, her parents, she had written a text saying that she, her dream was to open an orphanage in Haiti someday, and then she died a couple hours later. So her parents took that as their mission was to start an organization called Be Like Brit. So I started with Be Like Brit. There's another organization called Tree of Hope Haiti that I've been involved with, and Skip and Pat actually. I'm going to hand it over and let them talk a little bit more about Rotary, uh, Rotary's involvement and Tree of Hope Haiti. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of all over the, the map in terms of my involvement with Haiti. So it's a country that kind of sticks with you. And, it's great. I know, I know that uh, in the last show, I was referring to the fact um, that um, I have a I have a, a brother-in-law now deceased who is a very active Rotarian and who was no, known by some of your other guests. But he had been to Haiti several times, right? And 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 so there were a lot of connect. And then I found um, so my 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 wife was a is a is a was a was a teacher's aide for years and years with little kids. And so she introduced me to Roald Dahl, like who is like my favorite writer. His daughter was this guy's is this guy's wife. This, no, they didn't get married. They actually did have a relationship, but she uh, uh, he proposed and she turned him down. And said, you know, I couldn't, I can never compete with your love for Haiti and your patience. But they've become part. They're but they're partners. You know, they're business partners and friends. And you know, right, Ophelia right. will say, you know, it's, our relationship is much better. You know, as than it ever would have been as a marriage. But Paul was married. He mar ended up marrying a Haitian woman and has three kids. And um, Ophelia has a partner and a kid. And but, and it just to note, because 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 Doyle actually was from. I think he lived in Africa. I'm sorry, I, I digress. I didn't. I didn't mean. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's your show. <laughs> that, that's a fascinating thing. Fascinating. That's a fascinating thing. And can we talk? In, you want to talk a little bit about what you know, kind of how Rotary has been kind of participating in all of this? Okay. Well, you know. Um, it's kind of last time we were on the show, so to, so to speak, on your show, we talked about um, Rotary's involvement with the community, what we're doing in Northborough. But Rotary, as you know, and, and maybe everybody ought to know, is, is a world organization. And just interestingly, Rotary has a foundation. It's actually one of the, um, the number one foundations in the world. And one of the things it says, and it's part of its mission, is to enable Rotary members to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through the improvement of health. There are other things to it, but it sort of all comes full circle to what would the Rotary Club do, but the Rotary Club should be involved in world understanding and peace through its members. And so Leslie brought to us as a club her her meeting with Paul Farmer and the excitement she had. We were actually away at the time and we, you know, heard about it on the phone and the excitement in her voice and the excitement that the club had when she presented it to the club was just 
you know, amazing. And to see the connection between Rotary and Partners in Health and, and Health and World Understanding and Peace, it all came together for us. And so this is a project that we need to get behind. This is something we need to be a part of. And so, of course, at that time, it was um, sponsoring the, the um the film at the high school with the discussion with Paul Farmer and, and with Chris in the library and it all again came together. And then COVID-19 and the pandemic and everything changed. And Partners in Health needed help. They needed help with um, with testing, with my, with, it's the test kits, the, the uh, the, that particular piece of it for the for the world, not just for the U.S. at that time. They were talking about their other parts of the world. And so Leslie put together um, a program, which we have on our YouTube video, um, that you can see all about Partners in Health and what it's doing and how you can help. So Leslie, you know, how what did we do as, as we put that video together? So yeah, so we created a video again. Uh, they partnered Health got its health. It started in Haiti, but they're now uh, servicing Haiti, Malawi, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Lesotho, Mexico, Peru, Russia, Kazakhstan, and the Navajo Nation. Um, and actually, interestingly, so now to bring it even to home in Massachusetts, on April third, I believe it was, Governor Baker announced a partnership between Partners in Health, the Department of Public Health, and the state of Massachusetts to start a massive contact tracing program for the state of Massachusetts. So all of a sudden Partners in Health that, you know, is based in Boston, um, but you know, the only where they've been, only area they've been working in in the United States has been Navajo Nation has become, you know, forefront in Massachusetts. So this has become even more, um, you know, relevant to, to us, you know, as Massachusetts residents. And that program has become so popular that, or so their expertise has been in such high demand that they have now, as of about a week ago, started a, an entirely new arm of Partners in Health called the Public Health Accompaniment Unit, which has been created in honor of this pandemic, but will be a permanent fixture. So uh, we'll help to bolster our much needed uh, you know, public health system nationwide. So it's really um, kind of staggering the impact that Partners in Health has had around the world over the last 30 years, but now in Massachusetts and even nationwide, right, excuse me, right now. That's where I had heard of it. That Watching the news, we've heard of part, you know, and I was saying, why do I know Partners in Health? What? Yeah. That's a big deal. They're, they're the major. They're the major component of kind of coordinating the whole contact tracing effort here in Massachusetts. Yep, that, absolutely. That, well, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty staggering. So, so we. Can I, uh, can I ask? We, oh, go ahead. Can I just ask one other related related question to this? Because this is inevitably Rotary always thinks globally. So Chris, I'm just going to do one more sidebar. Sure. Right? So my daughter, my daughter, who was a was working at uh, RISD and was working on this project with MIT, they were doing wa a water project um, to develop uh, containers, more efficient containers, so that folks in Africa and other countries can actually wheel their water from the wells to the homes. And she was in Ghana at a, at a site. She was just going out to Ghana for the first time. She so she's on this. He's, you know, goes to the capital and just going into this, you know, small town on the way to a village. And 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 there's a little in the little town, there's a little thing and there's a rotary flag. Rotary, <laughs> you know, meeting on, you know, Thursdays or whatever. So she says, I gotta stop. So she stops and she and she talks to the guy, right? She walks in and there's a you know a store owner, you know, oh yes, you have to come to Rotary. So she spoke at Rotary, you know, that <laughs> week about what they were doing and they said this is the most amazing thing you know that there is this interconnection not government based you know it's an it's an amazing thing an amazing thing. sorry for once again reading, i, I digress but it is it is strange how things connect you know well that's your digression my first rotary meeting i ever attended was in india <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah it is definitely a uh, worldwide organization well, Arthur, you know, as Pat and Skip know, and, and Leslie, uh, you know, Rotarians are welcome wherever you go in the world. If you see that rotary symbol, right, you're, you're, you're kind of welcomed. You know, you're at home. And we're kind of like ambassadors. Uh, you know, we go throughout the world and uh, we all have this kind of familiarity with, you know, supporting whatever the, uh, the project is in, in that particular area. So, 
you know, Leslie, I, I was wanting to um, get back to the uh, documentarian, uh, the, the documentary, Bending the Ark. And I know we're going to uh, have a trailer, I think, uh, as part of this uh, show. Did, do you want to talk a bit about that that documentary? Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. So it, um, I have watched it. Um, Skip and Pat have. I shared it with you, Chris. I don't know if you've had a chance to check it out yet. I know you've been pretty busy, so probably not. But it's it's really <laughs> a stunning documentary. It's uh, really masterfully done and um, really just you know tells the story. So the program that we were planning is to have a meet and greet where Paul Farmer would come to the event, have like a 45 minute meet and greet, pass around finger food. <laughs> Again, hard to imagine that right now, but we will get back there. Um, then we were going to show the documentary, and then there was going to be about a you know 20 to 30 minute question and answer session with with Paul as well. So it's a real honor to have him come. Apparently, he never comes to these screenings, um, so it's a real honor that he will be coming to Algonquin Regional High School with the capacity of 850 in the auditorium. I'm hoping we will have a packed house. Um, again, hard to imagine right now, but we will get there. So we will pull this off until we can do it right. And, and I know he spends probably, you know, half his time at least in Haiti, but does he also live in the Boston area, Leslie? So he, his homes are right now, he has a home in Miami um, where his wife and the kids are right now. He's in, I don't know if he's still, but at least a couple weeks ago, I know he was hunkered down in Boston. Um, he's actually the head of the Department of Global Health, Equity, I don't know the whole full name, at, at uh, Harvard and also at the Brigham. So he sees patients at the Brigham. He teaches undergraduates and graduates at Harvard Medical School. He's kind of all over. So when he stays in, in Boston, he stays with a friend. Um, and when uh, he has his own room there, <laughs> I guess he's a you know, pretty regular fixture there. And uh, But his official home, he has a home in, in Conch, Haiti, which is a squatter settlement. That's where he got his start. He has a home there and a home in Miami. So I don't, he spends, he's everywhere. And, you know, he travels to all the other, you know, 10 countries. So I don't think he, his feet are on the ground anywhere for very long. And if people that are watching from home wanted to support this effort um, in Haiti, how, how would they do that? Would they go on the Partners in Health website? And, and do you know that address by any chance? I do. do so you it's a, happen it's a, to know that address? <laughs> you just happen to know that. Let me pull. Uh, we have a fundraising page set up for specifically for our um, Rotary has set up a fundraising campaign. Um, and hopefully we can include this in the um I'm trying to find the link. You'd think I would have it on the top of my head here. Um, okay, it is uh, donate.pih.org. It's kind of long, so but I'll say it's slash page, slash outreach, slash view, slash campaign, <laughs> slash Rotary of Northborough, and Northborough with, you know, the O-U-G-H. Um, but um, hopefully you can include this in the, you know, in the, final cut of the video here. Terrific. Oh, absolutely. We get this, we, you know, and once again, yet again, we want to thank Northbro Cable and CAT for doing just this great job for these shows and the, and the, whatever you need incorporated, we can get if there are phone numbers, whatever. It just, I appreciate wonderful. that. Well, also, a link to the video would be nice too. We did create, as, uh, as Pat mentioned, we did create a, uh, like a 20 minute presentation so that we could prevent, uh, I'm sorry, uh, present to the district uh, governor for uh, Rotary. So it's about a 20 minutes. We have a YouTube channel. There's some other partners and health videos in there and a few other things that uh, we've supported, projects that we've supported. So I can send you the, the link to that video. That would be great. And yeah, any support that, you know, partners and health. So one thing that one people, uh, the partners and in health initiative through the state is actually being funded through the state. So these donations will go to their work around the world, not to their work in the United States. And even this, Public health accompaniment unit um, was uh, their first year has been it's like a multi million dollar grant from something called the Audacious Project. So that's all funded for the first year. Um, so any of the donations will go to uh, Partners in Health's work around the world. The twelve countries that they serve. Chris, can I also just ask a COVID related question? Because inevitably, Ro Rotary once again, the tradition of Rotary is always thinking globally. So I would assume that Rotary is now thinking about this whole, the, you know, kind of the COVID-19 response globally. Can, 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 do you, do you, has that been happening or could you talk about that? Because I'm just curious as to how they're thinking about this now. Because I know, I remember reading two months ago, you know, from, you know, when this was just starting and the folks were saying, well, you know, the, the big deal here is going to be in the third world. You know, that the first world, there are going to be these economic consequences and all this other stuff. But we've got systems that can afford it, ultimately. 
Whereas the big deal, the kill, real death was going to be in the, in the, in the third world. And I'm imagining you folks are already, so I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Well, um, let me just, you can go to, anyone can go to rotary.org as a guest. And the, the mm -hmm. flyer, right across, the banner right across the top talks about COVID-19 and our, how you can donate to the international, the whole international program. So that's one way, you know, to look at it. But Rotary has what are called grants, district and um, international grants. And so Rotary Club's uh, districts throughout the United States are banding together to to take some of their grant money to get matching grants from Rotary International to help certain parts of the country. So there are all sorts of projects going on at the moment. And really the best place for someone who's not familiar with Rotary to find out is to go to rotary.org and they can find out. They don't have to be a member or they don't have to sign in. You can just you know do it. So that's the best place to go and look. And of course, as we always say, anyone's invited to come to our meetings. We're meeting by Zoom now. Um, so, you know, come and ask questions and visit us and find out what we have to say. And one of the things we talked about the last time you were here, and really, maybe we should make them like co-sponsors. Are they going to be like regular guests? Now? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. But the, la the last time they were here, as I, 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 I mentioned, I said, you know, I had always thought that Rotary was biz local business owners, but you said that you even take retired people Right. That you even and isn't that a wonderful thing? And that your meetings are actually at the senior the the that the the senior center or, or were when they're not Zoom, right? Yeah. So can you can you just kind of speak to that and to the you know the way that people might, you know, who want to be involved might be able to connect to you, right? Well, it's uh, it just happens that seniors <laughs> are the people that have the time to devote to the projects that, that we are doing. Uh, and our particular club, as you know, has uh, two or three uh, great programs that we're involved in right now. And uh, we're, we're certainly looking for every age group from 25 on up to 97. Uh, but the seniors, are so just, you actually include me in there. That's 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 good. Include <laughs> us. <laughs> And, and you know, as as you know, we we have our young people, so we get we get our ideas and our energy and thoughts from from the young people, and then the seniors give us their time, their talent, and and in many many instances, their treasure, um, because they're looking for a place to where they can help. Um, and also, you know, we also we give a little bit of um, we have fun so uh, we can laugh and we can have we can have next uh next tuesday is a zoomerita meeting um uh zoomerita meets at 5 30 uh on the fourth uh, tuesday of the month so uh, join us for a zoomerita meeting and i think that's the one for which you needed to get a a one day uh pouring <laughs> permit from the from the yeah. selection <laughs> uh, you need uh, to have at least one margarita for that meeting. Yeah. Yes. Is that is that, be, is that before the meeting or d during the meeting? Is there a there, all the way before, all during, way. and after? <laughs> just, you, just once again, you inevitably find these great, great folks. Well, I know that we you would you would want it to save a little time at the end because we want to make sure we have that trailer so that we can build that. We in. do. I just wanted to mention one thing. So, Leslie, I, I know you've gone gone over to Haiti a couple times a year and, and 2010 was I believe when that incredible earthquake happened right so so right. they've been recovering probably for the last 10 years and still recovering I'm, I'm imagining and and here we have COVID-19 and so this exacerbates what was already a very challenging uh you know it's, I mean it's it's devastating as as Art you know, said it just not just for Haiti but for all developing countries because their health systems are so fragile to begin with I mean, Partners in Health is one of the biggest hospitals prepared to deal with this, and you'll see in the video if you watch it, is, is a, a university hospital that they created in Mirabalé, Haiti, um, which is rural Haiti, but it's you know relatively close to, close to Port-au-Prince, the capital city. Um, and it just, to kind of show, this is a little aside, to show how Partners in Health thinks, they, they called it the University Hospital of Mirabalé, and they said, they said, ask Paul Farmer, you know, why, why there's no university? He said, not yet. <laughs> so he built it with the vision and, and there is a university in there now they've trained over you know 100 100 doctors so that's just the way you know 
they never say no to anything. Um, they are the, the house of yes, as they call themselves. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a uh, pretty astounding. And I'll get in one more plug. So obviously we're hoping that it's going to take place in September, but it may not. So people should obviously, you know, check uh, the Rotary's website, check the library's website. We're at www.northboroughlibrary.org. We'll have information about that on our site. And and also I think Dr. Farmer is working on a book or maybe it's all ready to, to publish. Uh, he was going to be bringing that book. And, and what is what is that book about? So uh, he has written a book called uh, Fevers, Fuel, and uh, Fevers, Fuse, and Diamonds. It's about Ebola. So it's very timely now. And he's actually now writing a COVID-19 chapter or epilogue or, you know, pre or something like that, an edition about, you know, COVID-19. So he's actually looking for pre-orders. He asked me to plug uh, pre-orders of the book. So it's on Amazon, um, available for pre-order. They're talking about it shipping in November 17th, but he said um, probably earlier, depending on how big the first printing is. So the more uh, pre-orders there all the, there will be, the bigger the first printing will be, the lower the price will be, all that. So I can send the link to the book as well. Mountains sure. Beyond Mountains, if you have not read Mountains Beyond Mountains by Tracy Kidder, it is an astounding book. Um, and then Paul Farmer has written like 10 books. So with the other funny thing, he said, when I, when I met him, I said, after I said, you know, are you, I am Paul Farmer, I said, I read your book. And he said, no, you read Tracy Kidder's book about me. My books aren't that interesting to show what a humble guy he is. So I took that as a challenge. So I have, uh, I've gotten through six of his books and I got another four sitting here on a pile and he's wrong. They're quite interesting. They're more academic, but, um, he said that the one on Ebola that's coming out is actually, um, written for the lay person. So I've been really plugging that one specifically. Fantastic. Well, Arthur, just another great, a great, uh, guest, uh, three guests and, uh, Thank you all for really for talking about, you know, Partners in Health and, and the Rotary. And, um, you know, we just appreciate your, your efforts on behalf of those, uh, you know, that organization. And, and the Rotary really is uh, just an amazing organization. There's, there's so many things that are happening that we talked about the Nutrition 68 program uh, a few weeks ago. And, you know, I, I just can't say enough about uh, Pat and Skip and, and all of the work that they're doing and Leslie as well. And so thank you um, for, for being part of our, our show today. Arthur, I guess. And I can't uh, thank Chris Lindquist enough for being, yeah. for really turning into a North row person. I mean, you got the guy, is she getting, is she getting a little honorary North row award pretty soon. Uh, no, for just kidding. <laughs> like he's definitely gone there. There is no we'll doubt about it. So. Again, in person, let's, let's all get together when this is, you know, when things <laughs> calm down and, and see each other in person. So, so, on really, thank you so much for having them. So on behalf of my wonderful co-host, the, the, the almost native Chris Lindquist and myself, I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, think, con consider any of those contributions to be advanced ticket sales for the for the presentation that, that you're going to go see someday, uh, uh, maybe in October. And we'll look forward to seeing you all again on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northbrook. Thank you very much. Et m'a gagné l'hôpital de fait que j'aime dire que j'ai des maladies qui m'ont fait. Et bien, celle qui a été fait pour moi, il était uniquement préparé tout le testament. Et je vous l'ai mis à bord ici de l'hôpital quand je... Le docteur Polo a dit non, je ne peux pas mourir. J'ai été à Haïti en 1983. Je n'ai même pas commencé l'école de médecine. J'ai rencontré les gens qui seraient mes meilleurs amis et collègues. I had never seen such abject misery in my life. We started going house to house and people were so sick. And I thought, how can we get this fixed? Jim and Paul were constantly going back and forth and they would borrow things from some of the hospitals. I would put that medicine in these big suitcases. They usually thought I was a tourist. As soon as we opened the clinic doors, it was every possible disease you could imagine. She's dying. I think it's too late. This was life or death. Getting medicine down there was life or death. And everything was conspiring against us. The scientific community hated it. They said, it's not sustainable, it's silly, this could never be replicated. We could not administer the program because we don't have the doctors. In this script, we are uneducated, of course, stupid. If you've traveled to rural Africa, you know this. People do not know what watches and clocks are. None of our patients have died. One person died a few days after starting therapy because we started too late. It took us from being outsiders right into the middle of the debate.
the results were dramatic and transformative. We decided this could be something like a movement. You are accountable to who? People I die in my brother. Rwanda is the most dramatic arc to a recovery. Threats of the deadly Ebola virus landing in the East African region. All borders are informed and screen anyone coming in Rwanda. Tout le monde sait mon. Si moi même cap vivre jeudi à me To me, this is about hope, and it's about rejecting despair and cynicism.